Who's ready for Christmas? Not many sleeves.
your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you blue? This child that you Don't 
everyone it is so good to have you here I'm Louie this is my wife Sarah that is why I'm suggesting we get kids it's not some other person but welcome to church and a big big special welcome if it is your first time here you have chosen a good day a good day to be in church if you have never been to church before so welcome to them is it like six sleeps to Christmas or something it's not a lot has anyone not done Christmas shopping yet oh oh Oh, you might want to get on oh, that. No. <laughs> I would not have put my hand up. Yeah, no, done. done. All done. Kids, are we ready to head out to Kids Church? Are you excited? Parents, Woo. if you've got kids age one, school to year five, please make sure they've been signed in, they've got their name tags on. If you need help, we've got team in the foyer up the back that can help you. We've got toilets just down the hall to your left awesome. and a mother's feeding room with a live feed. So why don't you turn around, say Merry Christmas to someone, and we'll be back in a minute. Great. Awesome. Oh, that's good. Ooh. Good morning, everyone. How's good everyone morning. doing this morning? Merry Christmas. Can I just say a special thank you to Christy Wilson? Yes. Come You're on, an Christy. Legend. They have been practicing carols for the last seven weeks, meeting here on a Wednesday night. Did also you all the... enjoy that? Yeah. that Absolutely was awesome. amazing. That last one, that's my new favourite. I was like, I thought Noel was my favourite, and then we got to that well, last one. And I was like, yeah, I've shifted, shifted to my, a new one. You're allowed to And do the that. kids, oh my gosh, couldn't yeah. get the smile off my face. Aren't they just it's beautiful? Awesome. So nice to have you all here this morning. Are it we is. feeling good? Are we feeling Christmas festivities all around and joyous yeah. and all that kind of thing? Nice hat. Good morning to everyone at home as well. So glad to have you join us. All this those morning. watching online, Merry Christmas. Absolutely. So we have got so much more planned today. So we want to extend an invitation to you to stick around just in case you didn't know that there was going to be all of this celebration happening today. We've got wood oven pizza. We've got face painting for the kids. We've got a giant slide out the back. We've got a traveling farm with lots of different animals. So that's we've all out the back. All out the back. Should so go around that way cafe. after. And uh, also, if this is your first time here, we want to warmly welcome you by shouting you a free coffee or a cup of tea today. To do so, can we just have our new to C3 slide up? Fantastic. If you just hold your phone up to the QR code and pop in just a few minimal details and you'll receive a welcome from us. And if you just show that to Cafe, they'll know that this is your first time and they would be so happy to shout you a coffee. Will. They will. It's good. Absolutely. Hey, we're going to give this morning. We are. You're going to share giving. something. Yeah, whispered in my ear. I did because yes. it's it, when, like, obviously the Bible is awesome. Who loves the Bible? Yes, yes. A few of you. So you can research, like, back to the first time something happened. And it's always interesting to see what the first time of something happening was. And so there was a first time that people gave to Jesus. And uh, I wanted to read that out. And I'm reading from the message translation. It's Matthew chapter 2, verse 7. 
uh, it says, Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the East, pretending to be as devout as they were. He got them all to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them a prophecy about Bethlehem and said, go find this child, leave no stone unturned. Uh, as soon as you find him, send word and I'll join you at once in worship because Herod was trying to trick these guys. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. While the carols were happening this morning, I could hardly contain myself. They were in the right place. You're in the right place this Amen. morning. Come on. Amen. They had arrived at the right time. You've arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. That was the first time that we've got story of someone giving to Jesus. Gold, frankincense and myrrh. They opened their, their bags. They, you could say they opened their hearts. They worshipped and they gave. After that, it says, in a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they walked out another route, left the territory without being seen and returned to their own country. After the scholars were gone, God's angel showed up again in Joseph's dream and commanded, get up, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, stay until further notice. Herod is on the hunt for this child and wants to kill him. What a cool story. It's all in the Bible. There was a census. Ooh, back then. They had to leave Galilee and they had to travel 90 miles to go to Bethlehem to register. They had to pull out their phones and get the QR code and check in. Tough days. They were, they were trying to kill Jesus. There were people like these guys that rocked up out of nowhere and gave an offering to a baby. Incredible. Well, it's pretty full on, isn't Powerful, it? Powerful, yeah. I was quite encouraged by that. Anyway, Absolutely. that was just my little uh, thought on on giving. Something else has been happening which has been amazing in regard to giving as, as a church, we have been able to give 105 hope bags. That's right. Well done, church. So as you're well going to give us an update. I am. So not only did we give 105 bags filled with the good stuff, guys, filled with yummy, delicious treats, yes. as well as 50 gifts as well. We, were, we partnered with Junction Australia this year and they were very overwhelmed by your generous giving this year. Totally. Not only did we bless families that uh, aren't in the greatest situations, but it also lifted their spirits in the office amongst the house managers as well. So it is amazing at what something uh, as simple as filling a bag with treats and buying gifts, how wide that spreads. And um, we are just so proud of you guys for totally. partnering together and those at home who gave as well. And um, Amy, who we worked with, wanted to extend her gratitude towards you. And in her words, she said, you are all champions and deserve to be acknowledged for your incredible efforts. And she's written a letter to say, to the team at C3 O'Halloran Hill, on behalf of Junction, I would like to extend a huge thank you to all of those involved in putting together the hope bags and gift donations. The generosity of C3 was absolutely overwhelming, has made a huge difference to the recipients of the donations. We had some incredible responses, and in some cases, it completely changed this time of year for some of our most vulnerable community awesome. members. Just a few dot points that she wanted to mention of, um, because of your giving and your commitment to our community, they've, we've been able to gather collectively create a sense of well-being during a very difficult time of year, provide these food donations to those that do need it most, including struggling families and tenants who are isolated from friends, family and their community. And also it, in, the gifts ensured that parents impacted by final, financial hardship and other barriers, including domestic violence, mental health, and disability. What, was, what were some of the gifts? Because I didn't know this. Uh, a range of um, toys. Uh, one of the hits was uh, iTunes cards. ITunes and vouchers, one of the reasons, yeah, the iTunes vouchers is because because there is high level of mental health, music, as, as we just experienced this morning, 
is yeah. is quite healing for the soul. That's good. And so that was um, they really appreciated that. And when when we gave them the gifts and mentioned that they were iTunes cards, just their, their faces just lit up with massive smiles. Going, oh my gosh, you have no idea what this means. And so, yeah, they, they were just incredibly grateful that um, parents were able to provide these gifts to their children and teenagers as well. That's awesome. So on behalf of all of us at Junction, we cannot thank you enough for the positive impact that you have had on our community, especially during this, this time. We hope that you all have a wonderful festive season. Wish you all the best for the new year. Yours sincerely, Amy. Very good. And I just wanted to share one particular story from one of the clients that actually uh, received one of the hampers. It was just a standout um, feedback. We had an elderly lady with significant and ongoing issues receive a hope bag from our housing manager. The following day, the lady called reception and explained that she was very down when she received the bag and may not have appeared grateful. She went on to explain that she was having a very difficult time and that this was only the second time that she had ever received a gift apart from her son. She was absolutely overwhelmed and overcome with emotions and she wanted to extend her gratitude and appreciation as it meant so much to her that she was considered. So good. So, it's awesome. we really are making a difference by yeah. Yeah, spreading some love. So, yeah, we wouldn't be able to do any of that if it wasn't for all of your generosity so and continued giving, not just today, but all always. year long. Always, consistently, so always giving. We're going to play a little video, just a little, uh, just to give you an insight. If you didn't know yeah. what hope bags were, this just gives you an insight into yeah. what we did and That's right. what, the, some of the process. Let's look to the screens. Joy to the world, the Saviour reigns. Let me Thank you guys so much for all of this. It's going towards a really great community that we have and we're so appreciative of all of your support. All of these bags are going to be going towards a lot of our tenants in our service. So a lot of them come from DV backgrounds, homelessness, um, and they do have a roof over their head, but they're at the stage where they're now starting to, you know, try and find that support and, you know, link in with the community um, and all that kind of thing. So again, thank you guys so much for all of this. And Christy Wilson, you start again on the video. You're like everywhere. She's on keyboard. <laughs> Can't get rid of you. No, we don't want to, but anyway. Well, I'm just going to share a couple of little thoughts and then we've got uh, all sorts of things happening out the back. So, uh, look, I'm going to be honest. There's always a little bit of pressure this time of year to share the right Christmas message. One year I shared on the uh, death and resurrection and had one of the older people in the church come up to me after and say, well, you got that wrong. That was Easter. Not Christmas, so I'm going to try my best today to get it right. If you don't approve, just don't let me know and we'll all be happy. All right, so John chapter 1. Actually, I should, I'm already getting it wrong, aren't I? Because if you know the Bible, you would know that John chapter 1 is not really the story of the birth of Jesus. Matthew and Luke have got the story of the birth of Jesus and it gives like a practical outline of uh what happened? Jesus born in the manger, Mary, Joseph. Joseph was trying to secretly, it says, I uh, read, that he was trying to secretly divorce Mary. I just thought that was a 
funny thing. When he, when he found out that Mary was pregnant and he found out it wasn't his and it says, but Joseph was gonna secretly and privately kind of just get rid of her because it was gonna be a shame. And there was like this, uh, this whole census thing going on. There was all this, uh, when Herod found out that this so-called king had been born, he sent out a decree saying, I wanna kill all the children like two years and below. And so there was this whole chaotic moment where, so what I'm trying to say is it wasn't perfect. It was a very unperfect moment that happened. And so it, Matthew and Luke explained the practicals of that, where they were, how it happened, Mary, Joseph, the manger, no room at the inn, all those things. But John, the book of John, it's not the practicals, but it's more the spiritual reality of what happened. So it's one thing to read about the practicals, who was where, what, the genealogy, and all of those things are fact. Like the guy Herod, he existed. He was a real, he was a real person. Pontius Pilate existed. That, that's like fact. This, the census thing in Rome ruling the world, that was, a, that was a fact. They were all facts. And so it's not like, I mean, this book is one of the most historically correct. If you wanna search out history and historically for proof, you can find it in this book. The question is not about the some of the facts, some of the question is more about the spiritual reality. So we know that there was a person named Jesus who was born, we know that, that's a fact. Whether or not He was the Son of God, that's like, that's more the question. So John gives a spiritual version of the same story. So he's not talking about the practicals, I've made my point. He's talking more about the spiritual idea of what it meant to have this so-called Son of God being born in the earth. And so John explains it more in an abstract, artistic way, which I actually quite like. It's this abstract version of the same thing. So it says, John chapter one, verse one says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Word, Word, the Word, Word, that word, the Greek word kairos, the word actually means uh, in the beginning was the reason. Or the other word for the word, word, sorry, does that make, has everyone got the word, word? It's the Greek word for the word, word was kairos, and the, the kairos means reason or meaning. So if you want to look at it in another light of the way the original Greek was written, it would be in the beginning was the reason and the reason was with God, and the reason was God. Or you might read it as, in the beginning was the meaning, and the meaning was with God, and the meaning was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things are made, or were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man, oh, it makes me feel emotional just reading that, I don't know why, because it's, it, that makes sense. We're living in dark times. There's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of, the, the, the word chaos in the Bible literally means darkness, it means, or darkness means chaos. And so when we think about life and we think about the pressures that we're under, this gives reason and this gives meaning to it. There, there are dark times, but God sent a light into the darkness. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe. He himself, talking about John here, was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognise Him. That point blows me away. You can be in the world and not recognise that God made the world. You can be in the world and not recognise that Jesus Christ is literally the Lord of the world. We're surrounded by creation. We're surrounded by amazing, phenomenal things. The Bible says that if mankind was to look at creation itself, they would be convinced of a God. It's a phenomenal thing. They didn't recognise. He came to that which was His own, but His own did not receive Him. 
Yet to all who did receive Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of a natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh. The meaning, the reason became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Come on, that's the Christmas story right there. There was a light born into a dark situation. People didn't recognise Him, but there was a few that did. The Bible talks about some shepherds that were out in a field. And just on that point, shepherds never got invited to anything. In the Jewish history, shepherds were considered to be dirty, unclean people. And so shepherds could just stay shepherding as far as everyone was concerned. They dealt with animals and poo and dung and all sorts of different weird kind of things. And, but yet somehow they saw a star, an angel appeared to them and they were told of this miraculous birth. They were the first to rock up on the scene and walk into that manger. And even that little point, the fact that the, the Son of God, who is the so-called King of Kings and Lord of Lords, is not born in a palace, but He's born not even in a house. He's born outside, like in the back little area where they keep the animals in amongst the poo and the dung and the bleeding sheep is where the Son of God is. And somehow these guys walk in and one of the first things they do is, as the Bible says, they bow down and they worship. Those other people that we read about before, the, the Magi, the Maggi, we always go for walks through the conservation park. My wife's always, oh, look at the Maggies different Maggies. But, um, the Maggie showed up. Maybe it was an Australian. Maggie, she showed up. Maggie was into it. She was keen to see Jesus. They were astrologers, these guys, wise men, the Bible calls them, that came from the East. And th this, is the, this is the kind of the point, I guess, of what I'm saying, is somehow these astrologers, these... Uh, one kind of idea is nearly magicians or wise men had this ability to see through the darkness, to see through the chaos or to see through all of the distractions. And somehow they could recognise that in this child was something special. That was, the, that was kind of the deal. And, and when it says that like his own didn't recognise him, what that actually means is it means that all the religious people, the, the, like the professional Christians, the, 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 the Bible scholars, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Bible, they, they didn't recognise that this was the Son of God. So you would think that the, the people that were in the Word, in the Bible, had gone to church, that they would recognise this, this crazy, amazing moment when the Son of God became flesh or the reason or the meaning becomes flesh. But the Bible says they didn't recognise the shepherd in a field recognise this. Mary and Joseph obviously recognised that something was up here. These magi that had come from a distant land recognised something was kind of, but they had to find Jesus. They had to like kind of go after Him and seek Him out. And so in that moment when they rock up and they see this little baby and we read before that they, you know, gold, frankincense and myrrh, they, they, they give an offering. It's like nearly an investment of some description. But obviously these people wouldn't do what they did if there wasn't something significant or special about this child. I mean, anyone else have a shepherd rock up at your birth? Anyone else have gold, frankincense and myrrh showered on you at your birth, like in the hospital room? Like gold, frank, there's, there's something like just random people just showing up in the middle of the night saying, here, we've got gifts. And then not only have we got gifts, but we're gonna get on our knees and we're bowing down, worshipping your child. Imagine what Mary and Joseph must have been thinking. What? I mean, these things had been revealed to Mary and it says she kept them in her heart because like an angel appeared and said, you're gonna conceive a child and it's gonna be a miraculous birth. It's not gonna be jo Joseph's child. It's gonna be the Holy Spirit's child. And Mary's like, what? Joseph hears of this and goes, I'm gonna divorce her because this is a shameful thing that I'm not even married yet. And now somehow she's pregnant. She's gonna be shamed. I'll be shamed. So, and then an angel appears to Joseph and says, Joseph, just stick with it. It's not perfect, is it? It's kind of inconvenient. It's, it's problematic. The whole story is kind of like, imagine what they must have been feeling and thinking as they're literally just like you and I, they're literally having to believe this on just faith alone. 
They're stepping out and steps of faith, just going, we're just gonna go with it. For those of you that are on our team and the leadership team here or the music team, you would know the same. Every Sunday morning, we have a little prayer meeting and they say, Pastor Tim, what's in store for the service today? And I say, just go with it. Anything could happen. Who knows? I'm convinced that God is in charge of His church. This is the first time we read about this moment in history where these people literally came to a moment to worship the Son of God. The word Christmas, Christmas, literally means Jesus' celebration. Isn't that cool? Christmas, the word Christmas means Jesus' party. Who likes parties? Who likes having a good time? That's why we're doing this. It's just a, it's a moment in the year where we stop and recognise that we are living in dark times. We are living in confusing times. But in Him, when these Magi rocked up, these wise men rocked up, in Him they realised something supernatural. That I mean, like you and we could get into an argument over it and I could try and prove to you and you could try and prove back and we could, but until you've had like this heart revelation where something, it's like you don't know it up here, you know it in here. It doesn't make sense up here because why would anyone worship a baby? Why are we still having these moments 2,021 years later on the 25th of December, we meet together to celebrate a king being born? Why is it not just finished and ended back then to this day? Because still to this day, people are still having moments where this light is coming into their heart, where we, we look to Jesus. And in a moment, like why that song, what was that? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And like I'm getting all teary. I'm like, what's that? What's that feeling? Week in, week out, people walk into church and they sense a feeling. It's like there's a feeling. Those magi walked into that room and they looked at that baby, there was a feeling. This is not just a normal baby. They bowed down and worshipped thinking, this is not just a normal baby. They went away, they could barely contain themselves, realising this is not a normal baby. God has sent His Son into the earth to bring hope, to bring life, and in Him was all those things. In Him was life, in Him was hope, in Him was forgiveness of sins, in Him was resurrection power, in Him was healing. In that little baby, right there in that moment, in Him was all those things. And it hasn't changed for you and me today. In Him are still all those things. When we come to Christ, when we have a heart moment, a heart revelation, He is the Son of God in that moment and we choose to worship something. There is like a spiritual transaction that happens. How good is God? How happy are you thinking, I want a party because of what God's done to us. There were dark times, but He sent a light and the darkness could not comprehend what God had done. And right in the middle of the darkest hour, God goes, I've got a solution to the problem. I'm sending my Son, Jesus Christ. And whoever turns to Him, whoever comes to Him shall not perish. If you believe on Him. And I'm thinking, oh. Thank you, Jesus, full of grace and full of truth. Why don't we stand back on our feet this morning? I smell wood oven pizza. I want the band to come and I'd love us to sing that uh, hallelujah part. Was that the plan to sing hallelujah a bit or you had like another plan? People just go with it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I wanna pray a prayer for all of us today, but maybe you're here and you've never had a personal experience or a personal moment like those guys did in the Bible, like a revelation moment of a, it's like a aha. It's like it didn't make sense, but now it does make sense. And it's not an intellectual thing, it's a heart thing. Sometimes even I don't understand everything up here, but in here I know it's right. I didn't, I didn't ask God to come into my head I ask God to come into my heart. God lives in my heart, not in my head. You don't want to get in my head. It's a scary place. <laughs> some days it's happy, some days it's sad, some days I think I can do this, some days I'm like, I want to just terrible. Some days it's like, it's a, it's a confusing place. But 
God lives in here, in my heart. And so I make decisions out of this place. And so when we wanna come into a relationship with Jesus, it's not a head decision, it's a heart decision. And so 22 years ago, I walked into a church. My parents were running the church at that time. And at the end of that service, my dad said this thing. He said, is there anyone here today that would like to ask Jesus to come into their heart? I was sitting in a service just like this and I put my hand up in the air. And I was like, that's me. I wanna ask Jesus to come into my heart. And then dad said, you can put your hand down. So, And he just simply said, after that, why don't you close your eyes and bow your head and he pray this prayer. And I prayed that prayer. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, come into my heart. And I thought, well, something's got to, something should have happened. Is he come in yet? Where is he? And I wasn't sure if he had come into my heart. I just said a few words. I didn't know, but I knew one thing. That day I walked out of that church service totally different. I still had all the same confusing thoughts, but something had changed in here. And on that day, 22 years ago, was the day that I came into a relationship with God. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, I have never been the same since. My life, my wife's life, my kid's life, totally transformed in a moment, simply by just praying a prayer of faith. And it literally was a prayer of faith because I was like, did anything even happen? But something did happen. God put a light in my heart. God sent Jesus Christ into my heart. God sent His Spirit into my heart. So I wanna ask you that same question today. If you're here and you've never asked Jesus into your heart, or maybe you have at some point, but today you're like, I need to ask for Him to come back because I feel like He's kind of gone. I just want you all to close your eyes, bow your heads. And if that's you this morning and you'd like to pray that prayer and ask Jesus into your heart, just a moment, I'm gonna ask you to slip your hand up in the air like I did. I'm not gonna get you to leave your seat or get you to do anything to embarrass you in any type of way. It's a decision between you and God, but I'd just like to see that you're making that decision. So if that's you this morning, can you just slip your hand up in the air and say, yeah, that's me. I wanna pray that prayer this morning. I would love to ask Jesus Christ into my heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you. So good. All right, let's all pray this prayer together. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' Name. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my Saviour. Make me your child, God. Forgive me for anything I've done wrong. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Let's sing that song.
Hey, thank you for joining us this morning. It's good to have you here. Just before we go out there, there's some fun things. But Christmas Day, we have a service at 9 a.m. here, just a short service. And the following, the Sunday after Christmas Day, there's no service. So don't come here, we won't be here. <laughs> You'll be alone. <laughs> but Christmas Day, we will be here, 9 a.m. Yes. 9 a.m. Christmas awesome. Day. Well, out there today, round side of the cafe, there's wood oven pizzas, traveling farm, snow cones, face painting, a giant slide. Sounds pretty so awesome. Excited. And as exciting as that is, please do not forget your kids. Make sure you pick them up and head around. It's going to be an awesome day. Awesome. We'll see you on Christmas Day.